Cervical spondylosis is age-related changes in the cervical spine, which is the neck. Uh, it is often associated with degeneration of the discs, bone spur formation, maybe sometimes alignment problems, ligament thickening, uh, all of which can give people different types of clinical symptoms. The symptoms that people present with really fall into three different buckets or types. Uh, one pattern that we see related to the spondylotic changes is uh, neck pain, and that's a common thing for people to have. Um, a second pattern that people will have is related to pressure on a spinal nerve, and that usually causes pain, weakness, numbness, and tingling wherever that nerve goes, typically into the arm, some part of the arm. Uh, and the last pattern that people will see is, uh, or may see, is pressure on the spinal cord. Uh, and pressure on the spinal cord causes symptoms not necessarily painful, uh, but symptoms related to uh, clumsiness and dexterity and balance problems. People often feel like they can be walking drunk, uh, or they'll have problems with uh, dexterity, like buttoning their shirt and zipping up their jacket or putting on jewelry, things like that that require some degree of dexterity. That falls into the third pattern. Not all patients are going to have all of those patterns, but part of the decision making depends on what symptoms they're having. Cervical spondylosis happens to everybody with age. Uh, when it becomes a problem is when um, people start developing those symptoms of particularly clumsiness or pain into their arm. Uh, it's not always emergent that something needs to be done, but it's important to keep an eye on those to understand the symptoms that they have. Uh, a lot of times if those symptoms are enduring, if people have more pronounced weakness, or as I had mentioned, the balance, dysfunction, and clumsiness, those are things that should prompt people to seek some medical attention. The treatment options for cervical spondylosis depend a lot on the symptoms, and we make a real effort at Jefferson to try to individualize the care so it's a bit more personalized. We try to understand the symptoms people have, we try to correlate that to what their MRI, CAT scan, or x-rays show, and then we really define the goals of surgery to say, we want to take the pressure off of this nerve or your spinal cord at this level. Uh, once we've defined those goals, then we'll talk about different treatment options, surgical treatment options for it. Uh, the surgical treatment options for it really involve surgeries from the front that are very effective at taking discs out and taking the pressure bone spurs off of the nerves and to some extent even the spinal cord, uh, and some surgeries from the back that involve also taking the pressure off the spinal cord or spinal nerves. There are a lot of factors that influence which of them makes the most sense for that person, and that's what we spend a lot of the time talking about so that patients can feel like partners in that decision making for picking the best solution. Cervical spondylosis surgery is a very common procedure that we do at Jefferson. It's a common problem for people to have, and even though we employ non-surgical treatment options, when people do go on to have surgery, depending on the technique that we employ, it typically can involve one to three nights in the hospital. That would be as a general rule. Um, afterwards, often people are in a cervical collar for varying amounts of time, anywhere from two weeks to 12 weeks, depending on the intensity of the surgery and the problems that they had. And for that period, we really tell people there's no heavy lifting, bending, twisting. We want people to kind of take it easy to recover in the early period. Usually around six or eight weeks out from surgery, we start people on physical therapy to recondition their neck muscles, to kind of get back the flexibility that they have, to, to work on strengthening, uh, and that often helps a lot. Usually somewhere between six and 12 weeks, people really feel like they're through the whole surgical experience, even if they're feeling pretty good for those first six weeks even. I am Dr. Srinivas Prasad. My mission at Jefferson is to improve lives.